IBM is a old company, but it is new again. And sometimes what's old is new again. And let's talk about mainframes and let's talk about Linux. And, you know, let's talk about uh, some technology, uh, the, uh, new technologies that are coming out. And this week, IBM announced a couple of things. I'm going to let's have Z this one. OK, yeah, you got it. I'll, uh, they came out with a new Linux box, the Linux 1.3 uh, III Express model. I never know how that's supposed to be said out loud. Um, and then they came out with some new mainframe. Um, basically, on the Linux 1, it, it came down to a, um, IBM identifying a really interesting opportunity to play um, a little bit down market using its, its capacity, using its uh, economies of scale. And with this new box, they're basically coming in with a smaller a uh, faster time to market with all of its baked in services that are in its big Z mainframes, things like HyperProtect and confidential computing to be able to address two markets. One, they're addressing um, the down market opportunity in database services. And two, and the one that I think is, is potentially most interesting is coming out with a box that really can address the growing demand for FinTech. And you know, you think you hear so much about crypto and what's going on in this space. Well, one of the big problems is you need this type of technology of what is in the Linux one and in the Z mainframes to be able to do these uh, FinTech, uh, to be able to take advantage of these opportunities. Problem, these, these, these boxes are expensive. I mean, you're talking about well over a quarter million, in many cases into multiple millions. It's kind of like the supercomputers of, <laughs> of the mainframe world. And a lot of times these startups that are doing really interesting thing, whether it's crypto mining or FinTech services, they don't have millions and millions of dollars. So they want to do this type of stuff using cloud, but that's not the uh, opportunistic or ideal uh, place to be doing this stuff. So IBM said, we're going to take advantage of economies of scale. And we're going to build a box that you can get in, in a, you know, in a, for just the price of a small house, about $135,000 that would enable you to take advantage of the technology um, of IBM Linux one and to be able to concurrently use it in deploying your fintech or uh, some of these database services. Now, it's a big addressable market that IBM has primarily been missing because of their entry point being so high. So that's kind of interesting. It is from a competitive standpoint, Pat, as I see it, um, probably the biggest disruptor will be uh, IBM and Oracle going toe to toe here on some stuff, because uh, this really starts to, to com compete with the database appliances, exadata systems that have come from Oracle, where Oracle has been very successful. But I mean, what's more fun than watching IBM and Oracle compete, two big uh, tech companies that have been around forever that are still in this business? Um, you know, uh, you know, overall, I think um, this is a big opportunity. I mean, what I look at here is the volume is big. It addresses a new part of the market. Uh, the team, Ross Mari and the team over at IBM Systems and Z has been very good, very creative. Um, and, and by the way, this business, we talked about their very profitable uh, power and chips uh, business, Pat. This is another real windfall business for IBM. Everybody says what's old is old. Well, you and I have to agree what's old is new. And the fact is they've identified a market here. It's a highly profitable part of the business. In the cycles when IBM comes into market with the big Z, the most recent being the Z15, but with these Linux one, it can be the difference sometimes between IBM being able to deliver a quarter of profit and not being profitable is their mainframe business. So uh, adding to the lineup, expanding down the market and competing in a space where there's more volume opportunities was, was a good move and uh, something I, I'm, I'm bullish on from IBM. Yeah, the same day as the new Linux one came out, uh, IBM came out with its, uh, I, I like to call it, these are my terms, not their, uh, mainframe uh, as a service. Uh, IBM Z, uh, like you said, was 49% growth uh, last quarter, which is uh, mind boggling. And if OS uh, updates had come in, uh, entire systems would have been up uh, uh, in, a, in a huge way. But uh, just to set the stage here, so IBM already has a public cloud. It's uh, primarily uh, x86 based. It does have uh, IBM Z, uh, and I do believe it has some uh, uh, power in there. IBM also has a uh, satellite, uh, which is very similar to, let's say, a Google Anthos uh, and a um, AWS um, uh, on-prem uh, uh, infrastructure as well. But hey, what about mainframes, right? Uh, mainframes, almost by definition, have always been on-prem. 
And typically, right, you you buy the hardware and then you you license the software. Uh, IBM uh, Z already went um, uh, software by consumption, uh, and I wrote about that on Forbes, and uh, I wrote a new Forbes column where they're actually uh, using uh, uh, burst performance uh, as a service. Okay, so uh, IBM is essentially doing software. Uh, uh, as, as a service. And what I mean as a service, I mean licensing uh, and also the peak uh, hardware. Um, and without getting into some of the names that only IBM Z clients would understand, like MLC, MSU, R4HA, and Skirt, um, I'm going to just try to simplify it for the, the broader audience. And it's interesting, the only thing that IBM would have to do uh, to go as a service is is to go as a service for that initial uh, purchase, which I believe they're already doing under certain uh, managed uh, uh, contracts. Uh, but uh, essentially what we talked with Dell, which is opening that up to uh, more customers. Uh, I don't know. It makes a lot more sense, particularly now that you can get IBM Z in uh, standard uh, rack sizes, with standard power, where if you wanted to replace a bunch of x86 servers, you can plop uh, one of these or uh, a Linux one uh, in its place. And, you know, it does kind of uh, scramble my brains a little bit to think that uh, a mainframe that runs uh, Red Hat uh, Linux uh, that uh, uses containers and uh, can go multi-cloud. Like it's it's a basically a giant server. Yet we all, we call it a mainframe. Yet it, it's essentially a giant scale up server. Cool stuff. You know, Ross and his team are just kicking butt over there, and uh, it's really uh, fun and exciting to watch. Yeah, it really is. It, it goes against the grain. Like I said, you know, trying to make a mainframe cool is a really tough job. And I think that's why you and I are giving it so, so much credit to that team because not only has it made it cool, but it's also been an extremely important part of the underpinnings of that business.